Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we have Demi Burnett, a star of Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, Bachelor in Paradise Canada, and fan favorite and friend of ours. And now she's featured on ABC's Nightline, a very interesting conversation we're going to share with you guys. Adult autism, how a late diagnosis offers some a sense of clarity and understanding. As we know, just a few days ago, Demi shared actually her two-year sobriety. We're going to show you what she had to say, plus share several clips from her interview. The full interview is available on ABC News. It's entitled Reality TV Star Demi Burnett Among Growing Numbers of Adults Living with Autism. So we're going to share that with you, but we want to just say congratulations to Demi. Two years alcohol-free. She, of course, has described um, uh, in different videos we've shared uh, how tough the experience was when she went uh, alcohol-free cold turkey and, of course, believe had to go to the hospital and had uh, the paramedics come and had a seizure. She credits her friend Natasha Parker for being there for her, of course, also from Bachelor in Paradise fame. So once she quit alcohol, she realized that she uh, functions in a world that's different. Her brain is different than the normal way a brain might work. They call that neurodiversity. I'm no expert. Forgive me for getting it wrong in any places here. But what she has to say regarding uh, her late diagnosis, it's a very powerful uh, platform that she has. You know, people go on the show, they become influencers. They kind of wonder what their identity is going to be. Do I talk about this? Do I promote that? Do I not share my political views or, views, or do I shill just polit uh, religious doctrine? Whatever. And now she she's kind of really championing the idea of discussing what it's like to find out the blueprints, the blueprints for her brain, for the way she interacts, what causes anxiety, and not just thinking she's wrong or broken, and really uh, just flourishing in understanding who she is. So we love that. We're going to play, I think I've got six different clips for you guys. Of course, you can go watch the full thing. Due to copyright laws and all that, I just have to break it up, and I can only play a little bit at a time, but have a listen. What? Do people not know about you from what they've seen publicly? I'm really known for like being so bold and confident and like if someone confronts me, I could handle it and stuff. But I really don't like that kind of stuff. It's a performance. Yeah, for the theater. It's an act. It's, it's all a bit. an act. It's a performance to save your life though because like <laughs> it's it's necessary. And we see this all the time in the world of stand-up comedy where you can show some bravado on stage and be a certain way in front of a large audience and then the second you're off stage, you go back to kind of who you really are. And it's like she said, it's a, it's a performance, but it's also a survival mechanism. So many people have used different sort of normative ways of socializing and reflecting what the, how they're supposed to act. Am I supposed to laugh now? Am I supposed to be here? And and it's kind of and it, and it's good to know that that's that if that's not the true you that you can sort of um, find out and regulate who you actually are. It's like on six the months inside. after and I had been struggling with being on the same page as people, like them misunderstanding me and or me misunderstanding them. Last year, an autism diagnosis suddenly put things into perspective for the 28-year-old. What clicked into place at that moment? D uh, that, that, that feeling of being out of the loop of like, why, why is this coming natural for everyone else? Impulsivity, just, you know, might say something or do something that you really uh, regret doing. And so why do you feel like you want to speak out about it and be public about it? I want to be able to provide like that space for people to relate and uh, not feel like alone in this or not feel stupid about it. That's probably the biggest thing too, is people feel, uh, if you don't have complete control of your faculties, I mean, it's everyone's got a different, you know, you know, uh, uh, way of living. And I know for me, if I don't eat healthy, if I have a bunch of sugar, I, I can't process my feelings the same way. I'm in no ra way relating that to someone with uh, some neurodiverse issues. But the point is, is that everyone has to learn how to sort of use the body that they have because it's all different. We're all made different. So Demi's doing a fantastic job of sharing some of the different things on her social media here. When I meet someone else with autism, uh, I don't even know what that this stands for. Um, but she she's made, she's sharing skits on her social media. We're starting to diagnose more than just white boys who like trains. 
She says three times is nothing. The fact that more people are getting diagnosed now than ever. There is a huge gap where kids and people are being underserved and underdiagnosed. Yeah, because it's the same thing with ADHD where it presents differently in boys versus girls. She says kids from wealthy neighborhoods are 80% more likely to be diagnosed. Non-white kids are less likely. Autism without intellectual disability rates have grown five times the percent. So you're seeing that because of what essentially is a shoddy privatized healthcare system, people can't afford to get diagnosed. It's true. I know people that are very close to me that don't want to spend, they go, you know what? I don't know. Do I have the five or $6,000 to, to go through the system and have some old white guy doctor tell me that I'm got some psychosomatic issue when in fact it's this and people, they don't get diagnosed. And then they sort of like white knuckle it through life because that's almost easier than going through the system that's gonna that's expensive and and you know still you know so, so luckily Demi had that privilege um, to to figure out that diagnosis but it wasn't easy. Challenges and differences in social interaction and communication, preferences for routine, repetition, as well as sensory sensitivities. Of the so of course everyone like I said it's different in everybody. Some people you know can't deal with. Uh, certain uh, noise issues other people if there's if it's too crowded or if you've you know whatever D anxieties can be presented in ways that you know like like we said with Demi she she drank a lot she was she was drinking as a way to sort of self-medicate once she got rid of the alcohol everything came to the surface her diagnosis brought the relief she was desperate for way back in college she actually suspected she might have autism what were your social interactions like that gave you the feeling that oh maybe I am it's not like there's a specific social interaction. There's just this like feeling of oh, like uh, anxiety of like um, I need to put on the show, like put on the mask of like, oh, I'm a person who functions and does things. Hi, how are you? But I think that the mask is uh, very protective because you can't be your true self in the real world sometimes. Because and isn't that part of what we're all on earth for? I like to think that we're all just souls in our meat suits and we come to earth for different ways to learn about ourselves. And sometimes it's not till our deathbed and sometimes we don't learn and others it's like, all right, I'm this, I'm a poet, I'm that, I'm a, I'm a visionary, I'm, I'm a mother. Like all these things, there's no one that's better than the other. It's just about sort of figuring that out and good on her for actually being super young and coming to the term. We look at it as like, oh, you get diagnosed as an adult. Sure, you can't go back in time and correct all of the things that you probably had teachers that didn't know anything about autism and you were like a square peg forced in a round hole uh, but at least now it's like you can live every day with with the knowledge that you're gaining Wait, what it may seem like an ordinary reality yeah, tv okay, moment yeah. but demi says she was struggling with social cues and anxiety that's not me trying to like get do a gimmick that was a moment of pure autistic like isolation for no reason like uh, misunderstanding misreading i'm in fight or flight until i'm done talking to colton every single time she's now begun to live in a way that's more comfortable for her doing what's called unmasking by the way it must be wild for her to have sort of the scientific evidence she can watch herself on camera and see what she was doing and going oh that wasn't even me being me hey it's all right demi colton wasn't being himself either as we know now he was a closeted gay man uh presenting as a straight man in order to fit what he thought was a heteronormative society that he had to be a part of maybe it's because of his religious upbringing or whatnot he so it's actually very interesting that at the same time they're both struggling she's struggling because she's pretending to be someone she's not Colton the same way so you know now she's living in Los Angeles as you guys know I did her podcast and had a very very great time chatting with her and um, open invite Demi if you ever want to come on driving with Dave um, we can do whatever the heck you want to do on our episode and we can uh, you know teach me a little something let's 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 educate ourselves you know maybe maybe you're in the audience watching maybe you're undiagnosed maybe a, a child or a mother it's just important to know when we have people in our lives that might be lashing out or getting anxiety or can't handle the volume being too loud is we've all got different ways that we process the inputs of our environment which is earth we can't always control all of it so if and I remember I, I 
believe I, I went to a, an event in the fall that Demi was at, but I went right after she was there. And I found out the next day, Demi talked about this, that she actually had to go backstage in, into a quieter room because it was like an, a nightclub and it was too loud. I would have loved to like see her and say hi, but like we just didn't, I didn't connect with her. Um, but it's, it's just good to see that now that she realizes I don't like loud noise. I don't loud noises, bright lights. I don't need all that. That just gives me anxiety. Take yourself out of that situation. Don't go to a rock concert. Don't go front row. Like put on the headphones. The more we can regulate and learn about the world around us, the happier and safer we will be. To exist and not have to like, you know, be so frantic about how to survive all the time. So there she is. We're excited to keep on following Demi's story. I think she had a few more um, uh, things she talked about. She talked about autistic children needing the support to thrive. She said, make it make sense. Support and help that costs a lot of money isn't support and help anymore. It's a major cost and could send someone into a bigger burnout. We need accessible support for everyone. Our mental health is severely impacted by the lack of support from the system that's supposed to help us. If you are autistic, ADHD, neurodivergent, can you comment the ideal way you would like to be supported? I would like support from people who truly understand the nervous system disability, that is PDA. I haven't heard, I had a single therapist truly understand and respect the PDA brain. If they did, they would understand how gut-wrenching it is for me to help myself. Yeah, so I can't even imagine how brave Demi is when you, when you really consider that she's fought against all of like what normal society you know the, the the ways that it doesn't work for her and being an influencer being in front of the camera being on social media uh that's incredibly challenging for a normal uh in uh, uh not you know person who doesn't have who, who isn't neurodiverse so for her to come out here and sort of uh bear all and explain her struggles i think we actually aren't giving it enough credit i truly do i think Demi um, could really use more support from within the Bachelor world. And I think she's kind of had to go about it on her own, which in the end just shows how much of a survivor she is. And we just hope that she can thrive and continue to share her message. I think it's important for everyone. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. We'll be back after this.